On trial right now is one suspect, Amari Pollard, charged with killing one victim, Sean Jackson. But the graduation day shootout on June 6 had more than just a single casualty. In all, seven people were shot, including Jackson's stepdad, Renzo Smith, who also died. So for the last eight months, CBS 6 has been asking the question, Who's going to be charged for shooting the other six victims? This is something that's got to be clarified throughout the trial. CBS 6 legal analyst Todd Stone says the complexity of the case may make the prosecution's job more difficult. This is a very unusual case with so many people being shot and having more than one firearm. Um, it, it can be a muddy mess for a prosecutor to work out, but it's important that the prosecutor lay this stuff out and explain it for the jury. The Commonwealth's attorney has already instructed the jury to focus solely on what happened to Sean Jackson. But the defense, which is arguing self-defense in this case, has drawn attention to a group of some other young men who they claim were threatening Amari Pollard. They are Malachi Mann, Jamon Flowers, and Dominique Fowler all friends of Sean Jackson. Attorneys say they all had guns and that Fowler and Flowers fired their weapons outside the Altria, as did Renzo Smith. Earlier this week, the defense announced that Fowler and Flowers have been charged with misdemeanor reckless handling of a firearm. And that was the first time we've ever heard of any additional charges in the case. A prosecutor's duty really isn't so much to release public information as it is to protect the trial. Stone says it makes sense that we haven't heard about this until now. I, I think here you're, you've got a prosecutor who's balancing these interests you know, letting the public know what happened versus protecting the jury pool from um, being tainted and, and having evidence that might not come in at trial. In a statement, Richmond police acknowledged that under normal circumstances, they would have announced these criminal charges without stating the juvenile's names. But they added that they used discretion to not announce the juvenile detentions so as to not disrupt the court process that was about to begin.